What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Mean Streets, MLB Dream. Myself, Chris Meany. We are previewing the Tampa Bay Rays from a fantasy baseball perspective and an MLB betting perspective as well. If you're looking for a fantasy draft guide to help you in your fantasy baseball leagues, we got you covered over at ftmfantasy.com slash pricing. Promo code Seager5. Save yourself a little bit of cash. We have projections, tools, rankings, uh, strategy pieces busts, sleepers last year's garbage that didn't work out for you in drafts that may work out for you this time with a discounted price tag on draft day uh all led by our guy vlad sedler with a lot of great uh insight from people at ftn including mlb dream and others across the industry as well dream and i'd be with you throughout the entire season giving mlb picks futures already in our ftn bet tracker promo code ftn wins to save yourself a little bit of cash let's get after it we'll talk about the tampa bay rays i'm gonna be honest with you dude i, I just um i don't have a lot to say about this phrase team over the past few years they have been a team that vegas and other people have counted out and they have surprise every year you see oh the rays are doing it again you know they win every trade platoon bats how how this how'd they find this pitcher this pitcher's come up and they've been awesome they've they've done this over the past few years um unfortunately some of their favorite our favorite arms Shane McClanahan <laughs> it's been one of my favorite guys to bet on and talk about uh here at FTN over the past couple of years Jeffrey Springs man I got so excited about Springs it's my fault I was already talking about Cy Young drafting this guy in the middle rounds he was off to a fantastic start I know a lot of us at FTN were riding the Rays last year we were riding Springs opening up at like five and a half strikeouts in April and cruising doubling that in a lot of his, his outings Tommy John McClanahan, Tommy John, um, Rasmussen. He's dealing with an elbow injury. Uh, Wander Franco. We're not going to talk a lot about that guy. There's no need to. Uh, he is not around. You're not going to see him uh, around at all. So this uh, this team is missing uh, a lot of the players that they had uh, when they opened up last season. And what a start they had. I know you in particular. How many times did you take the over on the four and a half run total in April? <laughs> I mean, you hit it all. You hit it by the third inning. Sometimes the first. Yeah, that was pretty much an auto bet. I feel like when I was putting that in the Discord, people got were like, "Oh, I already bet it." Like I knew you were gonna put it out. It was just automatic. And you mentioned yeah. it, man. My favorite Twitter joke is, "Oh, the Rays won this trade. Who did they get? And who did they give up again?" Like, yeah, I can't wait to see how they do it this year. I'm not high on them at all. Like you mentioned, their best pitchers are all on the injured list, right? Their best hitter is in jail. Um, so. I'd love to see how they're going to pull a rabbit out of this hat to, you know, win 85, 87 games and, and be in the running for the wild card. I don't see it. Um, they're just a hard team to really count out. I, I love Eflin. I've, I've loved him since his days, you know, yeah. even when he was the Phillies and even before he got to Tampa, he, that right, that knee needs to stay healthy for him to, you know, really perform. But there's really not that much <laughs> um, else here. I don't really know what to expect out of uh, Taj Bradley as well. He's a guy that I ended up fading a bunch last year, um, not intentionally, but he had issues with walks and then just getting hit really hard. So I feel like if, if this was any other team that had this roster, I feel like we'd, we'd be trashing them a lot harsher than we are. But just because it's the Rays, we're kind of giving them the benefit of the doubt. It's almost like we're giving them the respect to kind of figure this thing out with some of their platoon bats. And yeah, I mean, if the Rays call you and the GM, I just hang up the phone. No, no, I'm not doing it, man. Like, I'm not. Uh, what, you want this player that I didn't like really in my organization? I'm keeping him. We're going to try to figure it out with him. Uh, as you look at some of the odds here, we have a link inside the description of this video bringing you to the prop shop. I tried to give the best possible number. If you wanted to back the Rays at seven to one uh, to win the division, seventeen to one, the AL pennant and the World Series, there are long shots here, of course, at forty-five to one, and the win total is at eighty-three point five. They did have a ninety-nine and sixty-three record last season, two games back of the Orioles. Again, hot start, cooled down considerably. Uh, we already mentioned a lot of their pieces. Man, it's, I've really it's McClanahan and Springs are just like awesome pitchers. I just really enjoyed uh, watching them pitch. So down those two guys. Uh, we take a look at their lineup and some of their pieces here in, in fantasy drafts over at NFBC. There's only three players here on average going inside the, the top 100. It is uh, Randy Rosarino here at pick 44. Spoiler alert, I'm pretty sure Vlad, looking at his, his projections and his rankings, he has a difference between how he feels about them and where they are going in drafts over at NFBC. And he's got like this like plus or if it's green you know these advantage and if it's red you know going way too early and there's red all over uh a rosarina i don't think it's it's really on him 
I mean, three straight 2020 seasons. Kerlo 254 average last year. I think what you see is what you get, like 2020. Uh, maybe he can push to, to 30 stolen bases. Maybe he's a 260 hitter, but the protection in this lineup, I don't think is going to be there for him. Josh Lowe picks 75 here on average. Uh, the highest in, in terms of projections, he's projected for the most homers on this team, and it's only like 24. Uh, 20 last season in his first full year in the bigs, 500 plate appearances, a 292 average, but a 357 BABIP. Um, most projections have him for around 250. He does mash uh, right-handed pitching, which is something to consider, you know, in the prop market and in DFS potentially. Uh, but again, most projections have him under 20 home runs and around 20 stolen base. He had 35 last year. Uh, Fairbanks going to rack up some saves in the past. There's been multiple guys that rack up saves here for for Tampa. 25 last year, 68 punch outs and 45 innings, pretty solid. Uh, a little wild with the walks, but uh, a K machine. And again, it's been a guessing game over the past couple of years. I think he can lock him in for potentially 30 saves, even though this win total is pretty low. And that's all I got. That's really all I got. I know you you're a big Eflin guy. You were riding that train really all year long, man. Um, 9.42 K per nine, a 1.22 walks per nine, sub two walks, um, in three straight years and a 3.50 ERA. He's just, he's a really good pitcher, man. I have to make one of those bets that I knew had no shot at winning. Um, Eflin Cy Young, I think it was like a hundred to one. I think he got a couple votes, but I mean, it was yeah. just, you, you read off the stats. Dude was a legitimate ace. I mean, he deserved to at least get some first place votes. He was good enough to. And I knew that bet had no shot at winning, but a hundred to one. I mean, <laughs> I, I legitimately, I, I had to do it. I'm wondering. I'm a little curious with the what's the name what they got from the Dodgers, Ryan Pepio. Um, yeah, he kind of overperformed last year. I know it wasn't a large sample, but he had a 99.2 percent left on base percentage and a 189 Woo! BAPIP in 42 innings. So, like, I'm not saying that he's not good, but you can definitely, you know, expect an ERA much closer to four and probably above four this season. Yeah, just to like 70s, kind of the average and around 70, 75, 77, some strand rates like anything. That's pretty high uh, there for, for him. Um, yeah, I think F1's a pretty good target again. I, I get 177 innings from Kerr High, you know, the the 3X FIP. So solid numbers and a, a decent track record over the last little bit as well. But they're going to need some help to score some runs and they need somebody else to, to kind of step up. And uh, we've been doing this with all the teams. I don't think there's a really good bet here uh, at all. I don't think that they're going to hang around uh, for the division. The win total may seem low to you for a team that, you know, rattled off 90 plus wins. But um I'm going to stay away from pretty much everything on this list unless they, they just make us look like fools again and they figure it out. Maybe the 83 is the play. Like that wouldn't surprise me at all. And I'll, you know, when 85 eat, games, 87 games, like, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll look like an idiot. I'm fine looking like an idiot, but at this point, yeah, I'm not making any of those bets. If I had to, I'd bet the under and let's see, let's try this. Where do you have him finishing in the AL East this year? I got them second last. I, I got Boston last and I have them next. Yeah, I think we we agree there. Yeah, I think Baltimore, Yankees, Baltimore, Jays, I think are just better than them. All right, we're out of here. FTNBets.com, FTNFantasy.com, Seager 5, and FTN wins for you. Uh, good luck, Tampa Bay, in trying to get back to the playoffs.